Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meer Shah once again with another video. This is the part 2 of our university question paper solving of the subject strategic financial management which had appeared on uh, April 2023. We have already solved the first part where we have taken question number 2 all the 4 various sums. Okay. Now in this particular video we are going to solve question number 3 and question number 4. Okay, whatever are the important topics from question number 3 and question number 4, that is all we are going to solve in this particular video. Chalo. So, let us start. Question number 3, maybe you had question number 3A. Uh, Saloni Limited has rupees 70 lakhs allotted for capital budgeting process. The proposal and associated profitability index have been given. So, they are giving you initial investment and they are giving you profitability index. Calculate the net pro, uh, uh, net present value for each of the following projects and which of the following investment should be taken. Assume that the projects are indivisible and there is no alternative use of money allocated for capital budgeting. So two part question. First, we need to find the NPV. So very simple. First column, we note down all the projects. Second, we note down the initial investments or that is also called as cash outflow. Okay, so that is the amount that you're going to spend and profitability index which is given in the question. Now, cash outflow is considered to be as, uh, you know, column A and PI is B. Now, we need to find uh, something called as cash inflow. Now, in order to find cash inflow, the very simple, see, always remember, NPV is nothing but outflow minus inflow, or basically your total PV minus your investment. So, it's basically inflow minus outflow. Okay. So, very first thing what we need to find is cash inflow. So, inflow is nothing but A multiplied by B. Cash outflow into profitability index gives you cash inflow okay so i'll just get the laser thing out okay yeah so cash outflow okay multiply by profitability index you will get your cash inflow so 21 lakh into 1.22 10 lakh 50 thousand into 0 0.95 and so on and now in order to find your npv the formula is very simple it will be cash inflow that is step number c minus step number a okay cash inflow minus cash outflow that will give you your npv Okay, so our NPV would have been quest, you know, step C that is cash inflow minus your cash outflow. So 25 lakh 62,000 minus 21 lakh 9 lakh 97 500 minus 10 lakh 50, 29 lakh 40,000 minus 24 lakh 50,000 and so on. And with that, we will be able to get your NPV. That is the first step. Okay, where they ask you to find the value of NPV. Now, after uh, noting our NPV, make another column where we will rank which NPV is the greater than which is the next one and so on because for the second part we need to rank them okay so now ranking wise uh, we came to know that project D has the highest NPV then project C okay then we have project A okay then we have project uh, E and so on okay so now what happened here is now see what they told us we have to have uh, you know we have to select multiple alternatives so that we can maximize our NPV. Okay, the second part ka heading will be if projects are indivisible because they are giving you it is not divisible. So you cannot uh, take half or you'll have to take the full value as it is. Okay, now they said you can allocate only 70 lakhs. So outflow. So what we have to do here is we have to do mix and match. Okay, take various projects. The amount cannot go beyond 70 lakhs and then add up the NPVs. Okay, once we add up the NPV, the one which gives you the maximum value of NPV will be your chosen uh, group of projects. Okay, now if you look here, my rank one is project D, which is 31 lakh 50,000. Uh, then my next rank is uh, project C, which is 24 lakh 50,000. So 31 plus 24, so it's 30, 40, 50, 55, 56 lakhs is already done here. And if I have to take, make it to 70, what if I take E? Okay, because that gives me 70 lakh exactly. So my various alternatives, we'll have to pick various alternatives and add up the NPV and the maximum value will be your answer. Okay. So the columns will be projects. That is the various projects. Cash outflow, that is the total of all the alternatives that you're going to select. And NPV will be the total of all the NPV that you have selected. Okay. For my first option, we took option uh, project D, C and uh, let's say E because that total comes to 70 lakh. Exact. So project DCE, the cash outflow is 70 lakh, which is 31 lakh 50 plus 24 lakh 50 plus 14 lakh. Okay, which the and, and the total of NPV of for those three alternatives comes to 30 lakh 37 thousand. Okay, that is like first alternative that I got, but we got an exact 70 lakh which you can use. 
Now let us try taking some other combination so that we can maximize our NPV. What if I take D, which is 31 lakh 50 thousand? Uh, I take A, that is 21 lakhs, and I take E, which is 1 lakh uh, 14 lakhs. Okay. So D A E ka total came to 66 lakh 50 thousand, and the NPV ka total came to 13 lakh 9 thousand. Now, three to four alternatives you all can do. Now, since I have got, uh, you know, the outflow of 70 lakh, which is matching exact value, and the NPV is also much higher as compared to the second uh, best, which I thought. Any other combination if I take will not fetch me 13 lakh 37,000 ka NPV. So, that's the reason we will stop the sum here itself. Okay, you can go for multiple options and try to figure out if there is anything which you can get more than 13 lakh 37,000. But since we have got our outflow of exact 70 lakh and which has been completely used and got the highest value, none other combination will give you such a value because what if you take some other values, the total outflow will go beyond 70 lakh, which is not permittable. Okay. Therefore, in conclusion, the company will max its NPV by undertaking the project D, C, and E. Okay, so this is how you all had to solve question number 3A. That was the first part. Now for question number 3B. The question says that calculate economic value added that is EVA with the help of the following information. They are giving you financial leverage, equity capital, reserve surplus, debenture, tax and cost of equity. Now remember this is an EVA sum when financial leverage is given. Now there are multiple types of them. There are five variations in EVA. Okay, which has been posted in the video. So you all can go through that uh, the previous videos. Okay, now this is based on financial leverage. So now whenever they give you some based on financial leverage, first always note down the formula. Financial leverage is nothing but EBIT minus EBT. Now EBT will get split it up as financial leverage that is 1.4 is EBIT upon EBIT minus interest. EBT is nothing but EBIT minus interest. Now we need to find the value of interest. Interest is given. Debenture is of 400 lakhs and 10% is the interest. So 10% of 400 is 40. So our interest is 40. So 1.4 is equal to EBIT upon EBIT minus 40. We cross multiply. So 1.4 into EBIT minus 40 is equal to EBIT. You multiply now 1.4 into EBIT and 1.4 into 40. So we get 1.4 EBIT minus 56 is equal to EBIT. We keep all EBIT on one side and the numbers on the other side. So eventually we'll get EBIT is nothing but 56 minus 0 0.4. How 0 0.4? 1.4 EBIT minus 1 EBIT is 0 0.4 EBIT. When you divide, you get the value of EBIT which comes to 140. That is step number one. Once you get EBIT, you need to find NPB, uh, NPBIT. That is SIM. Okay, that is net profit before interest and tax. That is 140. Less tax. Now tax of 30%, the 140 ka 30% is 42. Subtract, we will get non-operating profit after tax, which is the very first thing that you need to find in order to apply into the formula of EVA. EVA starts with NPO, NOPAT. Say. Okay, so we got the first value. Now, we need to find the cost of capital. That is nothing but weighted average cost of capital. So for that, we have to prepare a table. Okay. We have equity, we have reserve, we have debentures. Cost of equity is given 17.5. Debenture ka rate is 10%, but there is tax. So we need to find rate after tax, that is KD. Okay. So the table will be look something like this. We'll have sources, we have equity, reserves, and debentures. Equity 170, 130, 400, total is 700. Weights are nothing but proportion. So it will be 170 divided by 700, 130 divided by 700 and 400 divided by 700. We get the weights. Cost, cost of equity is 17.5. So equity and reserve, they come under the same heading 17.5. But in order to find cost of debt, we need to find KD ka formula. KD is interest into 1 minus tax rate. So that is 10 into 0. Point, uh, tax rate of 30%. So 1 minus 30 is 70%. So 10 ka 70% is nothing but 7%. So cost of debt is 7. Then you just multiply weight into cost, weight into cost, weight into cost. You will get weighted average cost of capital. Get the total. We come to get the, we get the value at 11.525. Once we get the value of total, we can apply into the formula. EVA is equal to NOPAT, which is 98 minus capital employed. Capital employed, what is the total uh, value of securities that you have? 700 into cost of capital, that is 11.525%. Okay, so 98 minus 700 into 11.525%, we get 98 minus 80.675, final answer will be rupees, okay, 17.325 lakhs. So our EVA is positive, it is a good investment to make. 
this is how you'll have to solve the sum based on economic value added that was question number 3b so these were the two questions which are very simple 3a and 3b under this particular paper okay now under option there were another two question but i felt these were the two most simplest sum the question number 3a and b which was supposed to be done okay now we will start with question number 4 again in question number 4 there were two options under which the one which is very simple to solve you can score easily mark we are going to do that in which it was based on working capital management okay so here it is given that uh, nuts limited requests you to prepare a statement showing working capital requirement focused for a level of activity of 19200 the following information is given they are given you one cost structure and then they are given you adjustment raw material are in stock on an average of one month material in process two weeks finished good one month credit allowed to supplier one month to debtors it is two months uh, tag lag in payment of wages one and a half weeks lag in payment of overhead is one month uh, 20% of the output is sold in cash uh, cash expected is given 42000 and they said one month is equal to four weeks so we'll take everything related to weeks so if it is a weekly sum they, remember in a year there are 52 weeks uh, also calculate the maximum permissible bank finance as per tandin committee assuming that the core current assets are 25% of total assets okay they have given you other information also first we need to solve our working capital Now, in order to solve working capital, first we will note down two working notes. First, the cost structure. They had given you sales one eighty five point five, wages uh, raw material sixty three, wages twenty eight, overheads is fifty two, uh, cost is one forty three point five, profit will become forty two. That is the very first working note. Second, we need to get the working for units. Uh, total one lakh nine thousand two hundred units were made, and out of fifty two weeks. Okay, so when you divide, we get per week a two thousand one hundred units. First, always these two steps. Next, you need to note down this format: current asset, current liability, unit rate, period, and amount. Okay, that is the format. Okay, first thing is stock of raw material. Uh, stock of raw material. The number. Now, always remember now the number of units for the entire sum is two thousand one hundred. Okay, so stock of raw material to unit two thousand one hundred rate is sixty three, and uh, the period given is one month. One month is equal to four weeks. Okay. So our working will be 2100 into 63 into four. Total comes to 529,200. Under work in progress, we have raw material labor over here. Again, units is 2100. Rate of raw material is 63. And they are giving you material are in process on an average of two weeks. So 2100 into 63 into two comes to 264,600. Next, we have labor. Now remember, for labor and over as under WIP, whatever answer you get, we have to take half of that. <coughs> so labor two thousand one hundred into twenty eight into two into point five, which comes to fifty eight eight hundred. Over as again two thousand one hundred into fifty two point five into two into zero point five, which comes to one lakh ten thousand two hundred and fifty. Now for finished goods, remember the uh, finished goods are always taken. The rate is taken on cost of production, which is one forty three point five. Okay, and the period for uh, finished goods is given one month. Again, one month is four weeks. So two thousand one hundred into one forty three point five into four, which comes to one lakh twenty five hundred and uh, one lakh twenty thousand. So basically, it's twelve lakh five thousand four hundred. Same for debtors. Now debtors are always on selling price the rate. Okay, uh, and they said debtors' ka twenty percent are in cash. So cash we have to subtract. So it becomes two thousand one hundred into one eighty five point five. The period given for data is two months, so that is eight weeks minus twenty percent because that is in cash. So we subtract, we get twenty four lakh ninety three thousand one hundred and twenty. For cash bank value is directly given as forty two thousand. We add up, we get the total value of forty seven lakh thirty three thousand and seventy. That is total current assets. Similarly, for current liability, units are two thousand one hundred rate of raw material. Creditors are always on raw material, and suppliers are given one month. Comes to five lakh twenty nine two hundred. Outstanding and labor and overhead. Labor is one and a half week. Uh, overhead is one month. The rates are fifty two and twenty eight. So two thousand one hundred into twenty into one point five weeks and two thousand one hundred into fifty two point five into four weeks. We add up. We get a total current liability which comes to ten lakh five thousand fifty eight thousand four hundred. You subtract current asset from current liability or current asset minus current liability. You will get a gross working capital. In this sum, there is nothing related to margin of safety. Though your gross working will also become your net working capital, okay? Which comes to thirty six lakhs forty four thousand nine hundred and seventy. So with this, the working capital gets done. 
And now we need to find the maximum permissible bank final. Okay, now remember one thing. Remember the value of current assets and remember the value of current liability because only it's based on only these two things which you have to remember. Okay, so let us see how what are the various permissible limits. Okay, method of lending under tending committee maximum permissible bank finance. You need to find the first method. The formula is 75% of current asset minus current liability. So that will be current asset 75% of 47,3370 minus 10,58,400. You subtract and you take 75% of that. So we'll get first answer as 27,33,727.5. So first method is CA minus CL into 75%. Second method, it is 75% of current asset minus current liability. So it will be 75% of 47,3370 minus the current liability. So we take 75% of CA. And then subtract from CL and you'll get your second value which comes to 24,69,127.5. And the third method, the last method is, we have to take 75% of current asset minus core current asset. Okay. So first current asset minus core current asset, whatever value into 75%, whatever value minus your current liability. Now in this sum, they had given you core current asset is 25%. That is current asset got 25%. So 75% of 47,3370 into 25% is 11,75,843. Okay, you minus the current asset from core current asset or, you know, current asset minus core current asset. On that value, we'll take 75% which come to 26,45,645. And from that, you minus your current liability and you will get your final value of, uh, you know, 15,87,245.25. Okay, so... These are the three methods of finding the maximum permissible bank finance under the sum based on working capital. So these are the questions, the important question, a very simple question to be solved under this paper under question number three and question number four. Okay, chalo. I hope everyone have understood how to solve these two simple sums. You know, the three sums that we have done. Okay, working capital, very important, very simple and just have to remember the format and stuff. Okay. So I hope everyone have understood this. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.